on that day they will say, my brother, my sister, my question to you is, who is saying what to you today? On that day they will say, today, tomorrow, on that day in your life, the spirit of God's going to speak or the spirit of rejection, the stress, the circumstances, the flesh, the intimidation, the temptation, something is going to speak to you. On that specific day, whether it will be today, tomorrow, but on every day God will be speaking. Because every day God has an agenda, every day Christ is the life for you in that day. Amen. So my question is, and my prayer is that on that day, it will be Father, Son, Holy Spirit that will say to you, Amen. Make sure that you are careful to understand the voices speaking to you. That it's Christ. That is the Holy Spirit. That is that it is the revelation from the Father. Amen. Okay. Fear, fear not. That's the first point. Fear not. That's a command. God enables you through his love not to fear. That's in verse 16. As you know, you can write that down there. Also, 1 John 4 verse 18 says, Perfect love throws a party. Perfect love. Perfect love. Perfect love. Drives out all fear. Amen. Amen. You take that? So God gives you the command not to fear. But we can say, oh, we must sort this out and sort that out and sort that out so that we don't fear. To fear is a sin. It's not just an acknowledgement. It's not just a thing of, I need the comfort not to fear anymore. I need to accept his love. And when I love my God... Because he loves me. I received his love. I love him. I love myself. I love my neighbor. Neighbor, fear cannot take a hold of me. Because I'm busy with a power that opposes fear. And that is called love. Amen. So when you love one another, when you love yourself, when you love your God, when you receive his love, fear has no hold on you. That's it. You with me? Okay, take that as point number one. Fear not, but understand, that's a command from God, and you need to obey. You need to obey that. God will love you, doesn't matter what, because God is love. God is love. Amen. Number two, don't let your hands hang limp. God gives his word to you so that your faith will enable you to do your work. Romans 10, verse, hallelujah, 17, says, faith, Lord have mercy. Faith comes by hearing and hearing from the word of God. Amen. Hallelujah. So make sure that you are filled with his word. You're not allowed to just carry on. You're not allowed just to drag on with life. It's called a sin. Sure. Where is the sin? I'm not digging into the word. Where, I, where am I inaccurate? I'm not getting into the word. Get the word into my heart. Because if the word is here, I will be, become stronger and stronger and stronger. I will have the faith. Not just to drag myself out of bed and try and make it through the day. I will have a day. I will live life. I will enjoy life. I will not try to solve life. Amen. May God help you, my brothers, my sisters. Yes, when the pressure is on, I know. When there's a lot of work to be done, yes. But make sure that if you know, ooh, this week it's crunch time. There's a lot of things that needs to happen. Make sure you go then into that week with the word of God. You need to receive a word from God then. If you know you're getting into a week that's going to be tough, 
or week where there's a lot of challenges. Make sure you go into that week, not in a foolish way, but you've laid the foundation for that week. As a wise builder, you've got the revelation of what God is saying about that week. Wise builder, you're going to build, you're going to build in the midst of the biggest challenges maybe, frustrations or things that you need to settle. Build into that week with a word from God before you get into the week. Amen? Don't let your hands hang limp. Point number three. That is from verse 17. You all know verse 17. The Lord your God is with you. He's a mighty warrior who saves. He will take great delight in you. In his love, he will no longer rebuke you. He will rejoice over you with singing. Your God is with you. Your eternal hope, eternal hope is established through his eternal presence. Let's say eternal hope. Established by his eternal presence. If he's not with you, there's no hope for you. If he's not with you, if his hand is not on you, if he's not in you and you in him, there's no hope. You have no hope. And sometimes we could feel discouraged because we are too, too aware of the circumstances. We are too aware of a lot of other things around us that makes us discouraged. Let it not be so. When God is with us, who can be against us? That is found in Romans. I need to help everybody here tonight. 8, verse 31. Now say, Peter, next scripture is yours. Okay. Your God is with you. That's your eternal hope. Tell your neighbor, I have hope. For God is with me. Nothing else. You need nothing else to have hope. But if God is with you, you have eternal, eternal, eternal hope. That's it. For an excellent future. God works as a mighty warrior. He is the mighty warrior. You with me? He is my mighty warrior. God's work in and for you is against, and he that is against the enemy, as he works in you and he works for you. And he stands against your enemy. Your life is anchored, your life is made stable. Because God is working in me, God is working for me. God is fighting the enemies because the battle belongs to the Lord. Hello? Therefore, there's a stability. My life is anchored. My life, there's a stability in my life. Let's say there's stability. Because he's, God is fighting my battles. Are you with me? Oh, but you must stand. Yes, you must stand with what? With his armor. With the sword of the Spirit, with everything that is from Him, that is from Him, that is from Him. So that through whatever you have, through the Word, He's reminded that He lost. Lost. He's reminded that He lost the battle. Amen. May God help you that you allow this mighty warrior to fight the battle for you. Too many times. Guys, it's... That we can be so strong, not by power, nor by might, but by my spirit. But to allow that it's not my power and my, you know, what I can do. And not in rebellion, I can do this thing. But, I, but to stand back and ask the spirit is sometimes frustrating. Because it's not necessarily going to happen then now. It's not sit back. <laughs> it's stand back. Hello? And ask Holy Spirit, what must I do? What must I do? And you will see Holy Spirit working in you and through you. And you could be maybe amazed at what he will do. Next time, trust him in that. But many times we feel secure when we know what to do. And when I can do it, I have the strength to do it. I have the ability. I have the talent. Yes. 
That's not from the devil. But it needs to be under his guidance. Under his guidance. Are you with me? Joseph had a lot of wisdom. He had a lot of wisdom. He could interpret the dreams. He could see the dreams. He had a lot. And he could, could have done even a lot. But he held back because God was not finished with him. He could push with what he had. He didn't push in that way. But God promoted him. God opened the door for him. Amen? God enjoys you. That's number five. God's positive attitude. God enjoys you. Everybody say, God enjoys me. God's positive attitude towards you confirms your value in his eyes. God's positive attitude. God's positive attitude. Why would you have a negative attitude towards any person? Because your heart is not with God. You sort out your heart that your heart is with God. That even I can make a mistake with you. You can make a mistake with your brother. We can make mistakes with one another. But you cannot change your attitude towards one another. Because unless you say, God, you have a wrong attitude towards that person. <laughs> okay, your problem is not you have a bad attitude, attitude toward that person. Your problem is your heart and your attitude and God's attitude is in different directions towards that person. That's the problem. So you get out to God. If you see you have attitudes towards people, you, you know. I know irritations does not yet mean attitude. When I'm irritated, what I do with the irritation, I must ask God. I could be irritated because it's just plainly my flesh, man. I could be irritated because I'm irritated with something in myself that I see in that man. But I don't know that. She's like that. You know, just do it this way. And I, <coughs> I'm frustrated when she does it in that way. But it's because there's something in me that's exactly the same. And what is irritating me? Is Holy Spirit actually telling me, deal with this thing. God, why am I so irritated with that man? Speak to God. And God will many times tell you it's because He, the Lord, wants to deal with something in your life. Are you with me? But don't get the wrong attitude towards that person. Make sure your heart is where God's heart is. Because that's the place to mess up. When your heart works against God's heart. When your heart has a different opinion than God's opinion. The Lord will help us. God's positive attitude towards you confirms your value in His eyes. Okay, number six. God quiets you with His love. God is motivated. I say here, God is motivated within Himself to position you in grace through His blood. Those who write down, God is motivated within Himself God is motivated within himself to position you in grace through his blood. You are not, first of all, positioned in the situation, in the success, in the chaos, in the discouragement, in the, your emotions, in that issue with a person. You are not positioned there. You are positioned through his blood in grace. And grace is not just God's favor upon you, but it's his enablement. You are positioned in the enablement from God. You are positioned in the place where you are able to do exactly as God wants you to do. That's where God positions you. Amen. He quiets you with his love. And he's motivated by himself. He cannot but love you. Because he cannot be against his character. He cannot be against himself. God is love. 
So love is God. God is love. So if God is not love anymore, then love maybe will not be there for you. Maybe God will love you. Maybe he will not love you. Now God will be true to his character. God will be true to who he is. When he look at you, he cannot but love you. And in that, he says, let's deal with what is laying there in the past, but let it be under the blood. We need to get on. Guys, we need to get on more and more in the end time. We need to respect the blood. We need to let the blood speak. The blood speak. Let the blood speak more and more and more and more so that we can get over ourselves and the petty rubbish and the childish things with one another and churches with one another, the body of Christ, so that the body of Christ can grow up, so that we can become mature, so that men and women, spiritual family can become mature. Hello? To be ready for that, what God wants to do in and through our lives. Let it be so. Let it be so. In Jesus' name. That's point number six. Point number seven. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God is excited about you. God is excited about you. God's enthusiasm about you and him together. He finds the energy and fulfillment in you. God's enthusiasm. Enthusiasm is coming from a Greek word. word and the thus comes from theos. That's God, actually. In God, in God, uh, it has the context of energy. In God, the, the explosion that is in God. Actually coming from a total spiritual uh, background, if I must say like that, the word. God's enthusiasm about you and him. That he's excited that you're going to have life together with him. We are going to live life. We are going to do this together. We're going to embrace destiny. We're going to do according to the dream that I have for you, my son, my daughter. And Father is excited that you and I will do it with him. Amen. <coughs> You're still here. I believe so. Some feeling that they will go into the sleep of the Lord. I don't know if you find something like that now. Um, that defines the energy and fulfillment. Many times energy is based on stress. I must do something. Hello. It's based on vision. Vision, yes. Without vision, the people will perish. And you must have vision. But the energy, first of all, is not the vision. The energy is because of you and your father. The energy is because of his love. The energy is because of the relationship. Because in the vision, things can become blurry. In the vision, things can fall. In the vision, something can explode, but God cannot explode. Hello. With him, everything is stable. Your energy, your fulfillment is not the fulfillment of the vision. Not then when everything there, when I have enough money to do that, when I'm finished with my studies, then, when I have this breakthrough with my business, then. All the then, the then, the then. Ah, uh ah. -uh. Today, when God is speaking, today, there's a voice. And today, you can enjoy, you can be fulfilled, you can have energy. Because today, it's you and God. Amen? Don't let God just be a key for a tomorrow. No, there's a life today that he enjoys with you and that he wants to enjoy with you. And he's excited about that. Okay, from the, the next verse, 18, I'm just quickly going to read through and then we're going to take all the points. I will remove from you all who mourn over the loss of your appointed festivals, which is a burden and reproach to you. At that time, at that time, I will deal with all who oppressed you. I will rescue the lame. I will gather the exiles. I will give them Praise and honor in every land where they have suffered shame. At that time, I will gather you to you and 
at that time I will bring you home to me, the Lord. I will give you honor and praise among all the peoples of the earth when I restore your fortunes before your very eyes, says the Lord. Out of that, I'm quickly going to run through 8 to 12. Number 8, God sends people your way. God believes that you will receive the people he sends your way with open arms. With open arms. He believes that you will not, if you like, they are welcome. If you don't like, they're not welcome. Too many times people will send people to you. God will send people to you that he wants you to have an impact on them. Guys that are miserable. Guys that have issues. Guys that, when you look at them, you feel they're going to drain your energy. Hello? But because God wants to show himself in and through that person. But he trusts you that you will not chase them away. He trusts you that you will show them that they are welcome with him. Because many times it will be him who sent that person to you. Hello? Are you with me? That atheist that came to repentance, but they, he didn't know anything, nothing, nothing, nothing about God. When he heard about the Trinity, it was like, that's, whoa. Not freaky, but it was like, whoa. Father, Son, Holy Spirit, together, all is God. All three, one, one is three. And it was this guy. He was just like an agent sending. And people are sent to me the whole time. They're coming, coming, they want to give their lives to the Lord. And I ask, where do you come from? That they just rock up, do I need to give my life to the Lord. And I ask him, where do you come from? No, it's Mark. Mark was that atheist. I said, what is Mark telling you? He says, you're going to burn in hell. If you don't burn in hell, go to Duomini. <laughs> now, that wasn't the right evangelism. <laughs> but, but all I say is, God has an agenda. He's going to send people to you. He's going to send people to you. And you need to ask, God, why is this man here? Why I have a meeting? Is it just for the sake of a breakthrough for my business? Is it just for... A specific agenda. Or why is that person standing in front of me? Many times, more and more I do that now at a restaurant. If we would go somewhere, I would ask the person who's the waiter, the waitress. And uh, normally, it's a lady that will study, that's busy studying, or the guy. And uh, I respect that man. That somebody will, they, they do their studies, but they work also for the, the finances. Those who will just sit back and wah, 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 ah, oh. oh. But you need, to, you need to respect these guys, many of them. Those waitresses and waiters, they work and they study. Some of them, they work hard and they, there's no time for something else. So what are you studying? No, I'm 30 of this. No, I'm 30, I want to become this. And, and then it's major lines that they are studying in. Oh, can I pray for you? And then I pray for them for God's provision and that they will be, they will be diligent in what they do and they will be open-minded in their studies and God will show them the way. Ahead. Man, it's either tears or such an excitement or such an appreciation for the fact that just ask them what are they doing. <laughs> Hello? What is your future? What are you dreaming about? They appreciate that. So with every person out there. Why? That specific waitress was there by God. He direct your footsteps as far as I know. True? Okay. Are you still here? Oh, please. Uh, are you here? Thank you. Number nine. See who God will rescue and that he will deal with the enemy and not you. And not you. Lord, must we pray for, for some fire from heaven to come down? The disciples asked. And he said, no. <laughs> this is not the way. We will, 
You know, we can come against the enemy and chop off ears and do that type of things. And then it's not God's agenda. We will say, I will die for you, but you will not die, Lord. And God will say, get behind me, Satan. You need to understand the enemy. Who is the enemy and what you're supposed to do about the enemy. And how God wants to brag about how he will give you the, the, the victory. God wants to brag about the fact that it is he. He. It is he. The people in the land of Canaan, they feared because they heard what God, the God of Israel did to the Egyptians. They didn't fear about what Israel did against the Egyptians. They feared what the God and what he did against Egypt. God is jealous for that, that the nations will respect him and fear him and know that he's the one. But for that, you need to lift him up. You need to be accountable. You need to be dependable, uh, depending on your, your whole life on him. Hello? Be under his guidance. And the nations will fear God. If they serve him or not, they will fear him. Then he's not just using the name of Christ in every movie, in every film, and every... Yeah, I told you about when we had to get the permit for the farm. And it was a whole process. Ay, ay, ay. Get the permit for the farm to have a Christian school there. And that we were at this glass palace. Glass palace in Engels is most dead, no? Yeah, you call it like that, hey? Huh? Oh, of the municipality. And it was sitting at this one place. Not one of you were with me. But it was this guy. It was this Jesus. And all da, 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 Jesus. And by the third time he said that, I said, this is now the last time. And when he said, Jesus, I said, yes, that's my Lord. When he, the next one, he says, yes, he died for you. You know that, eh? But it's like every two minutes, I, I, I interrupt him. And later he was so, it, it, it became less and less and less because I took it with an excitement to say, that name <laughs> that you have on your lip, I'm so excited about that name. You know, through that name, every devil will flee. You will see it in your life even. <laughs> I had to ask Holy Spirit to get a next sentence <laughs> for the next time that he will say, Jesus. But um, ask God's strategy. Hello? I don't think he will ever forget it. God will give you strategy. Let him deal with the things. God takes responsibility for your protection if you allow him to do that. He takes responsibility for your protection if you allow him to do that. So it will be. I leave that one with you there. Number 10. God will gather a specific group of people. You become part of God's family agenda. Your acceptance is if you understand God's agenda with family. Not how you perceive family, because all the hurts and the disappointments and the perspectives that you have about family because of how you grew up in a family. Because in our family, there's a certain culture. And the culture in the family has more say, will be honored more than how God sees family and how God is setting us up for his family. The world will dictate how family will be, even with Certain laws and things that are vulgarly horrific. What, the, what hell and the devil can bring forth against family and family values. But God has a family agenda because he wants to live among family. The heaven he wants is not the heaven that he's living in now. That he's coming from now. And yes, he's among us now. But heaven and earth will be united Hello, and will bring forth, according to his dream, the new Jerusalem, the place, the, 
of peace, where peace dwell, and peace has to do with unity, has to do with the beauty of being together. And in the beauty of being together, it's God's family agenda. Nations will be his family, and he will dwell among them. That will be his home. Our Father's home, a family agenda. Let's say, I'm part of God's family agenda. And in that place, I'm accepted. My brother, my sister, and then it's not about if that one didn't smile, that one didn't say thank you, that one didn't appreciate what I did. Ah, man, it's not about those things, first of all. It's about God that says, call me Father. And I call you my child. That is the acceptance, first of all, that you take. Believe his word. God is not a liar. God is not a man that he should lie. Amen? Amen. Number 11. God restores and secures your destiny. Your future is in God's hands. And dependency, dependency on him opens up his blessing over us. There's an excellent future for you. That's also we find in Jeremiah 29, verse 11. Excellent plans God has for you. He's excited about your future. In his hands, in his hands. He wants to bless you. He wants to bless you. But you, if you sit with issues in your hands and with all these things, how can he bless you? He's so ready to bless you just to... Put his hand over you and bless you. But with blessing always comes a challenge from him. Always. So that the blessing don't become a curse. With blessing there's always a challenge. So that the blessing doesn't become a curse. Are you with me? You are blessed. But if you don't do something with your blessing, it will become your enemy. It will become the curse in your life. Let's say, my blessing will not become my curse. Mm -mm. So Genesis 1, God created man and he blessed them. He blessed them and he said. And he said. He blessed them and he said. Today, somebody will speak to you. He blessed them and he said, be fruitful. Multiply, fill the earth, subdue it, and reign over it. With my blessing, that is what you need to do. And if you don't do that, what will happen? My brother, my sister, it will become a curse on your life. The manna and the quails you can pick up for today, not for tomorrow. It's going to rot. It's going to be begin to get stinky. Are you with me? May God help you. May God help me understand how to be dependent on him and see how he will open up blessing for you. But the temptation with Israel every time when God blessed them, when he gave the breakthrough, their hearts, hearts every time turn away, turn, turn away, turn away from God. And as Paul said, it's all written as examples for us to learn from. Amen. God help me. God help me. When the blessing is raining down, that I will always understand how to honor that it's only because of your grace. Amen. I think I cannot say that theologically, but it is like I could feel that God would be frustrated in the, in the sense of he wants to bless us with so much. But then we are not open to position ourselves accurately towards him to receive it. As a father, he wants to give us so much. But that we don't position ourselves accurately to be able to receive it. May God help us. Number 12. Last one. God makes you an example for his honor. God believes that you will always give him the honor when he gives you the platform of success. We've spoken about that actually now. God has that faith in you. 
God believes that you will give him the honor. You will give him the honor. You will give him the praise when he gives you the platform of success. Ah, I've seen people going out, and especially even ministry, and people with their businesses, and they are running their next level. And you know, that guy, he gets a certain salary. There's a contentment. And I don't say you must be satisfied with the bare, 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 bare minimum necessities. No. But then the guy gets this major amount of money and then he stresses more because his budget does not work out. Amazing. I don't know if it worked with you that way. With a budget of five, ten thousand, it it can work out. But with 15,000, not necessarily, or 20,000, not necessarily. I've seen people in there, 30, 40, 50, and they would sit and say, I have this crisis, my budget is not working out. But when you had 5,000, it worked out. And I know, yes, there must be insurance, and I know all those things, but my brother, my sister, God must help us that our perspective is right and the wisdom will be accurate. Amen? Amen. Father, come and do that, what you want to do in our lives. Lord, I pray that we will so hear your voice. On that day, they will say, God, what will we say? We will say what you are saying. And the world will hear what you are saying because they will hear through our voices, through our lifestyles, in Jesus' name. Help us to see that, Lord. Help us to understand how you're enjoying us, Lord. How you are excited about us. You are excited about our future. You are excited about us as a family with you, Lord. God, arrest us with your heart. Arrest us with your perspective. Arrest us with your positive excellent attitude towards people in the future and in circumstances, Lord. Help us to be protected in that attitude so that a lot of rubbish and poison don't come and destroy our lives. God, help us to deny ourselves so that we don't destroy ourselves, Lord. We thank you that we have that capacity And that you come and you protect us as a good, good Father. Thank you for that, Holy Spirit. Make this practical for us so that we will know how to position ourselves. In Jesus' name, so we pray. And all say, Amen. Amen.